uh, first uh, we will have uh, Simone Tullio, who will present a geospatial big data infrastructure for asset management. Please. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Simone, and I work at Igeos, that is a, a company um, from a, a Italian space agency and Telespazio. And today, I'm going to talk about a geospatial big data infrastructure for asset management. And so, I want to introduce to our platform that is called Aware. Uh, it's a global land and infrastructure management platform. And our platform led the users to, to check the health uh, of their assets, so the infrastructure and the land, and by identification of the formations and movements of their buildings and their land, uh, using satel satellite interferometric products mainly, but also GNS monitoring, IoT technology, uh, RPS video, and also, our platform let the user to control and monitor over time the, the assets and the infrastructure and their surrounding uh, using specific encroachment analysis and change decker analysis, analysis. And also, to the, our platform support the day by day management with a GIS platform, a web GIS platform. And so our data comes principally, as we said, I said, uh, from insert analysis. So insert analysis like uh, choose some natural sensor on the ground, uh, and these sensors are called permanent scatterer. In fact, a permanent scatterer is a is a point on the ground, uh, responding coherently in time to different radar signal emitted by satellite, so by radar satellites. And good candidates to be permanent scatterer are, for example, rock buildings, uh, other infrastructure, bridges. Uh, so the data that we have on our platform are geolocated time series of displacements. In fact, a permanent scatterer is like a sensor. So we, we observe the sensor for years and each measure of a permanent scatter is a point in x, y, zeta with millimeter precision. And, and this measure of a permanent scatter together for a time series of displacement. So we can mo monitor, uh, like in the figure we, are monitoring our, we were monitoring um, a building. And so we, we understand that we have an historical evolution of the phenomena. We can study this, uh, this evolution, like uh, as we can see in, in this time series, for example, of uh, one point of one permanent scatterer. These, these measures are independent and complementary because, of course, we can also install the IoT, IoT sensor on that building, but we have, um, we have um, a general vision of the, the displacements uh, of the, the building um, directly from, uh, from SAR from the, the satellite. Uh, we are talking today about big data because usually each in SAR analysis uh, generate, for example, in the city of Rome, uh, consists of 17 million permanent scatterers, so 17 million of time, some time series. Here we have an example. We worked with with, uh, uh, with some engineers in a mining site. So uh, we want to monitor uh, uh, the mine. Uh, we have uh, three products here. So we have we generate some heat maps. Uh, in the top left, we have the heat map PS density. So we have we have um, an heat map that um, show how the permanent scatterer are are selected in the mine. Uh, it's a very important, I say, product because permanent scatter could disappear for uh, maybe a collapse or a, uh, terrain moving. And of course, we have the products of displaced monitoring because the engineers want to save the land, the land is moving. 
and we have an aggregated of uh, an aggregation of displacements uh, sent to heat map analysis. Um, okay, so uh, we s we can say that on the fly, custom heat maps analytics and statistics uh, enable RM monitoring. Uh, I would say uh, s can give uh, a complete understanding of the phenomena at said level. Yeah. So going directly on the overall system architecture, um, we have some width gas in the view, so we can set some filters, load permanent scatterer data set, uh, layer info. Uh, we have di different several portlet, uh, so geo window portlet, home of course, configuration portlet, audit, and that portlet are these portlet are generated using life ray portal and we can generate also reports thanks to mapfish but the very interesting thing that i want to talk about today is the big data part of course and from bottom to top the technologies are hdfs accumulo and geomisa and spark geoserver and geoanalysis yeah so maybe um, most of you have already heard about hdfs uh, HDFS stays for a dupe distributed fault system, so it's a distributed fault system, and that is designed to be high fault tolerant and suitable for application that uh, that uh, use a large data set as we have. And on top of HDFS, there is a Cumulo, uh, which is a key value store. It is highly scalable and distributed, and also structured and sorted. On top of Accumulo, we have Geomisa. Uh, I will say it's the, the very important technology here because it's an open source distributed spatial temporal database and uh, that is built on Accumulo, so it uses Accumulo. Um, Geomisa enables large scale geospatial storage analytics because it provides massive storage of point and polygon data. Enable spatial analytics, of course, using Spark, not not directly in Geomesa, and provide, I would say, as more or less as much of the spatial querying and data manipulation to Accumulo uh, as post this does to Postgres. As this is uh, not always the case. If you think about Elasticsearch, it has some some functionalities, but not not really so much. Uh, another interesting thing is that you know, GeoServer works with uh, data stored using GeoMesa. So if you have an application that already uses GeoServer, integration with GeoMesa is simply a matter of adding a new data store. And the very, very interesting thing is that how GeoMesa and Cumulo do the index, so the index indexing part. And because to store and, and query spatial temporal data, we have to, to need to create a, a key that represents the, the three dimension that we said before. So the longitude, the latitude, and the time of each record. And Geomesa uses a specific uh, filling curve named Zeta curve, Zeta tree, um, to store this three dimension along a uh, as the special line, so as we can see here, we have the, the zeta curve in red, and that visits all the set of a map exactly once, so establish like an order, and and so an index actually. Uh, actually, the key, the actual key in Accumulo is is a bit more complex than than a simple key value, as I said before, because Accumulo is a key value store, but but it's also structured. So the, the key, the, the actual key is more complex, but the Geomesa, I would say, does automatically because they have zeta tree and function in here, in there. So it's not a problem. To, in, to compute the, the, the heat maps and other functionalities, uh, you, you, we use Spark. For sure, you have <laughs> you have uh, heard uh, Spark many times during this Phosphor G days. 
I would say only that in Spark all work is pressed as creating, transforming or cooling operations on these spatial datasets that are called the resilient distributed datasets, which are immutable and distributed collection of objects. And to, to, to program, to, to write software in Spark, we use Scala, we use Scala and of course Udiburn, Udiburn, Jupyter Notebook, sorry. And one good point is that it is possible to implement web processing service uh, to process data uh, with GeoMesa and Spark, so we can expose uh, a full remote geospatial analysis tool. Now I want to show you some videos of our platform to give a glimpse of the uh, how it is. Okay, here we are in our city room, and we we are going to to load to load the dataset of permanent scatterers, so time series. As we can see now, okay, the visualization of thousand points is is possible because in post is not not that not that fast. I mean. Uh, it's even faster than load to QGIS, is that not bad, I will say. Another, the second video is about um, time series visualization and compute a linear fit. Of course, this this was possible in PostGIS, especially, especially if we have few points. So here we are selecting some points. We are visualizing the time series of displacement of uh, electric infrastructure. And then we, we click to fit, so we compute a linear fit. I said that the performances are, are good, of course, but it was possible also on postages. The third video is about the heat map. And here the fact is that we are able to, to generate heat map on the fly and it's very, very fast. Here in the video we, we draw an area and uh, we choose the heat map type uh, that is density. I, I said before, as I said before, is is just to have the idea of where the points are. We can set some parameters, and the generation of heat map is very, very quick. And this is useful to have an idea where where are the buildings, the the rocks, the various. And then we select the para parameters. So we we are going to display the displacement. And here in Fierdi Roma, there was a problem with their buildings because the um, the terrain was was going down and uh, also we can set some threshold to, to ignore the the here where no problem and um, the fact is that on post it, it, it was very slow so the the fourth and last video is about change color palette and thresholds and this is not merely a, a matter of visualization because the, to change the the colors, the threshold, and so the analysis, uh, it gives the the user to are able to do some data exploration. I will say, so it's not it's not uh, effect of only to visualize, and and as the engineers in the mining site, I said before. Uh, success is that set custom legend and threshold is fundamental for the users, and that was not. I mean, the data exploration it was it was not possible with postages because it, it was very very slow. So to conclude, uh, I will say some pros and cons with respect to postages approach. We of course we have faster access and visualization of data, faster processing and analysis of data. Thank you to Spark. We 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 have for free scalability, parallelism, and, and robustness, and 
that comes from uh, comes from HDFS, a cumulus Spark approach. And we have, as I said before, uh, one of the best NoSQL support of geometric function, thanks to Spark SQL, that we don't have, for example, in Elasticsearch. And some cons, of course, that we we have we need more effort and experience to configure such a system. And we had to change data organization because we had to migrate. Maybe if we have postgis, if we had the postgis. Uh, and database we had to migrate to to HDFS, Accumulo, and Geomisa. And of course, we if we want to implement new analytic functions, we have to learn Scala. <laughs> we can't use uh, you, we can't use PLSQL or Python uh, anymore. What we want to do in the next next mm, I would say versions of the platform do more encroachment analysis and automatic and semi-automatic detection of class classification uh, of changes uh, like the, the 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 figure so we we want uh, to know, understand that uh, a forest is disappearing or a park is disappearing and we are working on geotagged images video and this is not a fake <laughs> a fake image but uh, really we we are taking images from drones and geotagging and this is very useful when the when someone want uh, want to um, to see his infrastructure and check manually i will say or or have a look of uh, their infrastructure and and that's all thank you Um, when uh, you compare the, the speed of uh, your um, your tools in uh, in PostGIS, do you try the raster um, vector analysis uh, allowed by PostGIS raster um, extension? Yeah, we use. It works. <laughs> the question is, is if we use PostGIS raster. Okay, we use PostGIS raster, but we are. We are talking about. Um, I mean, we have permanent scatter that are extracted from the radar images. So we are uh, in this platform. We are using all the extraction of points in only time series. We are not analyzing the raster directly on uh, on the on the. Um, I mean, on the platform. So we import, as we saw in the first video, we import a data set um, from like. Oh, okay. But heat maps are generated directly from the points, the permanent scatter. We are not generating heat map on the rosters. I don't know if I, uh, I answered the question. Okay. Any more questions? I mean, I, we have not stored the, the, the raster on the platform. This is probably a noob question, but this permanent scatter, is it just vertical motion you detect? No, the displacement is about, I'm not an interferometing uh, person, but the displacement is about the distance from satellite. So the satellite has an angle, ah. and the displacement is... Uh, to and from yeah. the satellite? Yes. Okay. But we have a dedicated team in our, in our company that works on interferometic data, so... If you have a question, maybe. So, so if you have multiple readings of the same scatterings, you could get like a full 3D vector of the displacement? Yes, but I, mm, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm not, I say that I'm not interferometric person, but the, the displacement in the entire series are taken, uh, are distance from satellites, so are comparable, I mean. Any more questions? Okay, so I think we finished. Thank you much.